I'm Jay Coglin with uh, New Guanch, New Mexico. And I'll say a couple of words, but uh, I basically like responding to the needs of the audience, you know, whatever you want to know about. So after a couple of minutes of uh, me talking, I'll just uh, open it up to uh, questions uh, and answers. Um, but to start with, uh, New Mexico is the most important state in the United States, and therefore I would say in the world, uh, with respect to nuclear weapons policies. And for example, within the Federal Department of Energy, right now we're spending about $6.8 billion annually on just uh, research, testing, and uh, production of, uh, of nuclear weapons. And a full $4 billion of that is being spent in New Mexico alone uh, because we have the so-called privilege of hosting two of the uh, nation's three nuclear weapons laboratories. And of course we have Los Alamos uh, 25 miles away from where we sit right now. And then we have Sandia uh, on the uh, eastern uh, end of the uh, international uh, airport down in uh, Albuquerque. Um, you all may not know, um, but when you take off, I, I fly out of Albuquerque uh, quite often, and typically you're flying east when you take off, and if you know where to look towards the southeast, about two miles uh, from the end of the runway, uh, you'll see some very low-lying features that, you know, are intentionally not very visible. Um, but if you know where to look, you're looking at what is probably the largest repository of uh, nuclear weapons in the world. Um, be estimated just under uh, 3,000 uh, weapons. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is, uh, is that they're sitting there. Um, to give credit, you will find that uh, I'm not exactly bipartisan. Instead, I say a pox on both major parties. Um, but having said that, uh, Bush Sr. Uh, was the president uh, in our history that made the largest uh, amounts of unilateral uh, <coughs> withdrawals of uh, nuclear weapons. And back when the hardliners in uh, Moscow uh, were trying to take over in the early 1990s, as a confidence building measure, Bush Sr. Uh, withdrew all the tactical weapons from naval surface ships, uh, for one thing. And that's what ended up uh, down in uh, uh, Sandia, uh, again a couple of miles uh, south of the, uh, of the runways. Uh, so it's a good thing uh, that, there's, that they're there. Um, having said that, we're still looking at 20,000 uh, nuclear weapons that are still being maintained on an active basis. Uh, the U.S. and Russia, by the numbers, um, uh, possess roughly 95% of them. Uh, so it's our responsibility uh, to help lead the world towards what our president professes will be a, uh, a future world uh, free of uh, nuclear weapons. And to circle back to what I said earlier, or, or what I was trying to imply, I believe that we, as New Mexicans, have a special responsibility uh, to help achieve uh, that future world free of, uh, of nuclear weapons. And then I'm glad to uh, see a crowd that is not only, um, I don't know, aging people like myself or whatever. Um, it's nice to see younger faces. Uh, it's nice to have my 11-year-old nephew right here. I embarrass him, uh, but point, uh, point him out specifically. Uh, because I and others, uh, you know, hope to bring up uh, kids uh, to be concerned about these uh, issues. Um, I very much remember uh, living through the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. So to me, uh, you know, all of this is uh, an immediate threat. Now, sadly, uh, as I proselytize to younger people and specifically pick on my nephew, um, we have a really paradoxical situation right now which, you know, when I was, and actually the Cuban Missile Crisis happened exactly when I was Dylan's age uh, now. And so it's like, back then, the magnitude of the threat, uh, you know, was just unbelievable. And we were talking about global planetary annihilation. 
Um, and then, of course, people are always pointing to the Cuban Missile Crisis like I am now. But less well understood is that we had two uh, comparable crises over Berlin. Uh, and it's a number of times that we came that close. So, thankfully, the magnitude of the threat has receded. And we're not looking, I don't believe, at global uh, annihilation anymore. Um, but yet, the possible, the, the threat of, you might call it frequency, potential frequency uh, has arisen. Um, and we definitely face really serious threats. Uh, I've traveled a fair amount, and um, I was back in uh, oh, Afghanistan and Pakistan long ago, before the wars. Um, but there, I, I heard people, first of all, that you can't underestimate the degree of animosity between Pakistan and India. And I remind you all that they're both nuclear armed, and they could go up, they could go any time. It's just a flashpoint uh, that'll never end. And then uh, on another occasion when I was up in uh, northern Pakistan, I had a <coughs> reputed holy man uh, preach to me about how Islam was going to get its bomb. And, you know, I'm not picking on Islam. I'm just pointing out this ongoing proliferation that has occurred around the world. And what we really need to do is to keep as our constant primary aim to get rid of these genocidal weapons, you know. And I'm not a pacifist, um, but I do not like genocidal weapons that are going to kill indiscriminately. I'm going to kill, uh, kill the elderly, the babies, women, uh, etc. Uh, I find them abhorrent. Um, but we have a geopolitical situation um, back during the, um, after the Russians invaded Afghanistan. We have a situation in which the U.S. under President Reagan intentionally um, ignored the fact that Pakistan was developing, had a clandestine nuclear weapons program because we were so concerned about, you know, aiding and supporting the Mujahideen and getting the Soviets out of uh, Afghanistan. And to get to my bottom line, so I don't go off on too many tangents, but again, we need to have as our number one geopolitical objective getting rid of nuclear weapons because they're the only weapon that is an, actually an existential threat to our great uh, country. So instead of, instead of the geopolitical rationales that are convenient at the moment, and again, we allowed Pakistan uh, to develop its clandestine nuclear weapons program. We just can't do that. And now we look at the possibility of where uh, Al Qaeda, um, you know, someday may uh, possess uh, nuclear weapons. And I was just in New York City uh, two weeks ago and seeing friends who lost friends who were in the New York uh, uh, City Fire Department that went up the towers and, you know, they're all dead, of course, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but imagine if 9-11 uh, had been with a, uh, a nuclear weapon. So that's why we need to get rid of these weapons. Now, I've gone on a little bit longer um, than I intended to, and I haven't even gotten to uh, Los Alamos, uh, or Sandia, for that matter. Um, but briefly, um, as you all know, Los Alamos, of course, is the, uh, the birthplace uh, first of uh, atomic weapons.